Do you have a plate or a cup that has what looks like spiderweb cracks on it? That's crazing. Not crazy, crazing. And today we're going to talk about crazing. What is it? How does it happen? Can you prevent it? And most importantly, is it bad? And along the way, we're going to learn a few tips and tricks on how to store your porcelain for generations to come. I'm Julian Gower, and this is the Gower Collection, and today we're going to talk about crazing. Now today, I have two cups from the Wedgwood Countryside Collection. One is crazed, and one is not. This is the crazed one. And I hope you can see it because it's really hard to see sometimes, but I picked one that was really, really bad. And this one is not crazed. So what is crazing? Well, let's take this plate, for example. Actually, it's a bowl. Let's say it's just got two pieces, the clay and the glaze. It's the glaze that's cracked. So how does crazing occur? Well, we'll go back to the plate with the two compounds and they each expand and contract at a different rate during the firing and the cooling down process. If the glaze cools down quicker than the clay, you're gonna have crackle. Potters often talk about hearing the crackling happen in the kiln as it's being fired. They talk about it as pinging. Uh, I've heard it and to me, it sounds like wind chimes. It's very beautiful, but not to the potter's ears. Crazing can be apparent as soon as it's pulled out of the kiln, but it can happen way down the line. Years and years of use will eventually show those cracks. They're there, you just can't see them with the naked eye. Crazing can also happen with poor storage. Your porcelain is still expanding and contracting with temperature changes. And if it's been stored in an attic or a basement, they're subjected to some serious temperature changes and that can definitely cause crazing. You can also damage your porcelain by putting it in hot scalding water or worse, the dishwasher. I personally wash every one of my plates even if it says dishwasher safe. Can you prevent crazing? No. Once it's happened, the damage is done and it's just going to get worse. And with use, it will get worse. Every time you wash that plate with the crackling, water seeps down in those tiny cracks and gets into the clay. And if it's something like earthenware, which is very, very porous, it's gonna hold on to that water. And over time, that clay is going to expand, but the glaze isn't. So the glaze is what is going to crack. Proper storage of your porcelain is very, very important. Obviously, china cabinets are a very nice way to display your family heirloom china or just the china that you collect. They also make bags that are specific for storing china. I found this storage set on Amazon. It's sold by Storage Lab. It's very pretty and you can have plate racks. This plate rack was also found on Amazon and it's sold by Shoe Bridging Company. It is absolutely adorable. Three. You should also never stack your plates over six high. Why? Well, it all goes back to what we were talking about before with the contraction and the expansion. It's the tension that makes the glaze crack. And if you have a plate on the bottom and it's always on the bottom and you have six plates on top of it, it just is bearing the weight. And eventually this is the plate that's gonna crack first, it's gonna craze first, it's gonna chip first. Also, you should put a piece of paper towel in between each one of the levels. That helps with scratching and chips and it also helps with moisture. Also for stacked plates, you should rotate. Let's say that there's only three of you in your house and you have a eight piece setting and you always grab the first three, wash them, put them back, use them again. Before too long, those top three are gonna be faded and worn and they're not gonna match the rest of your collection. The last tip I have is overcrowding. 
Now, when I first started collecting, I had a teeny tiny china cabinet. And I had probably about 30 pieces of Wedgwood that I had crammed into this one china cabinet because I wanted them all displayed right there in that china cabinet. But they were all crammed together. And this is what happened. This is a Wedgwood Queensware. It is a tea saucer and it broke because I had too many things touching it and I tried to pull it out one day to look at it and it slipped out of my hand in the china cabinet and broke right then and there. But this was the only one that broke. But I learned my lesson that day. I went ahead and cleared some of it out, made some room so it could breathe, save some money and bought a bigger china cabinet. So is crazing bad? Yes, 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 and no. Crazing weakens the plate and crazing devalues the plate and crazing allows bacteria and mold to grow into the plate. So those are all bad things. But some people do like the look of crazing and some people like crackling. The difference between crazing and crackling is crazing isn't done on purpose. Crackling is and is a, a decoration. So it just depends on you. I personally have a few pieces in my collection that do have crazing on them. Um, I don't use them for the reasons that I, I don't want them to break. I don't want any more damage and I, I certainly don't want to get sick because I'm drinking or eating out of them but they're very pretty pieces and they're displayed and I love them. Thanks for watching today's video. I want you to enjoy your porcelain and I hope that some of the tricks and tips and things that we talked about today will help you understand and enjoy them more. Thanks and see you next time.